In my previous video where I was testing out loads of bind and fly drones that are sub 250, the Happy Model Crux 35 blew my mind. This thing was so good, but there was one major issue with it and that was its durability. Mine is still in one piece, but I have bashed this up quite a lot since I've started my testing with it. And I think it's only a matter of time before something breaks on this. But this upgrade will hopefully solve that issue and for $30, plus like a few 3D printed parts, this should be really good. The upgrade I'm talking about is this. This is the great discus frame from Toronto FPV. It is simple, lightweight, but way more durable than the original Happy Model frame. So just as a disclaimer, I didn't get this for free from Toronto FPV. He hasn't given me a discount on it. He doesn't even know that I'm making this video. I've bought this with my own money. I've had it shipped all the way from Canada and this was due to a comment that he left on one of my YouTube videos. Let's get this on the bench and then we can pull apart the Crocs 35 and then try this. So this isn't the video that I was supposed to be making today. I was supposed to be doing a completely different build video, but when this arrived, I thought I could put this together really quickly. It should be pretty easy. So yeah, that was me about a week ago when I was young, naive, and thought that this build was really gonna take 30 minutes. But in reality, this was actually a long journey of discovery, learning new skills, problem solving, and eventually triumph. So I'm not gonna bore you with all of the details of how I ended up having to learn how to 3D model to design and create 3D printed parts like the camera mount and the antenna mount, and then went through various versions of this until I got it right, or how I had to assemble this in various different ways to try and make things fit correctly. All you need to know, it was like doing a Chris Ramsey puzzle and it was really enjoyable to work this out. And so now with the magic of YouTube and editing out all of the mistakes that I made in trying to transfer this over, I can show you the quick and easy way of doing this upgrade to the Crux 35. And I stand by my original statement. Now that I know the solution, I can Honestly say, this will take about 30 minutes, even if you have no build experience. And yes, I've been flying this around, and yes, it retains all of the cool parts about the Crux 35, and yes, this is worth the upgrade. So with a bit of editing magic, let's go to the bench and I will show you how to upgrade your Crux 35 very quickly and very easily. So this is what you'll need. You'll need a Crux 35. I have the DJI Runcam Link version that I'll be using for this video, but if you have the analog or HD0 version, um, this build should actually be easier, but you'll need like slightly different parts and slightly shorter standoffs, etc. You will need the discus frame and the 25 millimeter standoffs. For those of you who are more advanced, if you're planning on stripping the Vista naked, which I will probably do in the future, not only will you save a bit of weight, you should also be able to use shorter standoffs, get that center of gravity a little bit lower, and you may not need the adapters that I will be showing you in just a second. You'll also need four M2 by 14 millimeter hex bolts. And these are for attaching the DJI Vista as the originals are a little bit too long and won't fit in the new frame. A 3D printed camera mount, which I spent a week modeling different versions of this, but then I realized that my Flywoo Firefly had one that fits this perfectly and it even protects the camera as well. I will leave a link to that below in the description. You'll need this 3D printed antenna mount I created specifically for the Vista antenna. Yes, it looks like you should be able to use the original, but the spacing is different on the side of the frame that we're using. You'll also need this stack adapter, which will allow you to mount the Vista on top of the AIO. And these aren't necessary as you can use the original knots that are on the Crocs 35, but I prefer to isolate the AIO with these 3D printed spacers. Also not necessary as you can use the bolts on the original Crux 35 to do this, but I use these M2 washers to tighten down the AIO. You can also use a 3D printed version of this, which I'll leave a link to down below if you want to use that instead. I would recommend printing these arm guards to protect the arms and motors in a crash. The only other thing that you're gonna need is a battery strap and a battery pad. You can pull these from the Crux 35, but for me, I'm gonna use this one from Beta FPV and probably some Omagrip or the Flywoo equivalent, which is also a sticky pad. The tools I use for this upgrade are a 1.5 millimeter hex driver and a two millimeter Phillips head screwdriver. 
it doesn't need to be a two millimeter driver that's just what i've got and it works you just need something that's quite small uh, because some of those screws are quite small uh, you'll also need a pair of tweezers they don't have to be like these ones just anything that you have would be good for some of those tiny fiddly bolts if you have big sausage fingers like i do so basically we are going to unbolt everything from the crux 35 uh, be warned that the DJI Vista is bolted to the top plate, so be careful you need to take out all of the bolts, not just the standoffs in order to remove it. And then you want to get to work on the bottom plate for the AIO and also the motors. And so here's what that looks like when you've got the insides all out of the original frame. Looking at the discus compared to the Crux 35, they're very similar in size. You can definitely feel that the discus is more durable. We'll start by adding the standoffs to the frame. The discus comes with a set of bolts. I use the longer ones on the bottom just because that's where everything is attached and you screw those in just like this. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take the long bolts that came with the Crux 35 and you're gonna push these through into the 25 by 25 mountain hole pattern, which is the kind of diagonal pattern. And then you're gonna fasten this either with the 3D printed spacers like I have here in yellow, or if you're using the original Crux 35 parts, you can just add the uh, locking knots that were on the original frame. At this point, I would mount the battery strap. If you're gonna put the battery on the bottom like the Crux 35, mount the battery strap now. Don't leave it until the end because I did that and had to pull the entire thing apart just to just to add the battery strap in. So add the battery strap now before you put anything else onto the frame. What we're going to do next is take the insides and we're going to bolt the 3D printed adapter to the DJI Vista. It's important that you do this this way around because it's a bit more difficult to screw the adapter plate on once it's attached to the AIO. And in order to attach this, you are gonna use the M2 14 millimeter bolts, as these fit almost perfectly. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the AIO, you're gonna sandwich that on the other side of the adapter, and then you're gonna add this to the frame. This will just slide straight on, and then what you can do is start to bolt those down with a set of M2 nuts or the original nuts that came with the Crux 35. You're then going to add the motors to the frame using three bolts, not four. If you want to add the arm protectors on, these go in between the motor and the frame. I mistakenly put these on underneath the frame, but actually they go between the motor and the frame. So this is the time to add those if you want to do that too. Now you're going to add the camera mount to the front standoffs which goes on pretty easily. And then what we need to do is remove the original antenna mount that came with the Crux 35 and replace it with the new 3D printed one that I've created. In order to do this, you need to slightly loosen the bolts on the DJI Vista so you can undo the little plate that is holding the antenna connector down. Once you've undone this, take a pair of pliers and just Pull on that connector very gently. Once that's off, you also want to slide out the ELRS antenna that is attached to the bottom of that mount. And now you can just slide that antenna out. Now you can add the new antenna mount. So I would put in the ELRS antenna first. Now you can slide the DJI antenna through the hole at the top and then you want to put that connector back onto the Vista and tighten it all back up again. It's worth saying at this point, I tried a few different antenna mounts. Instead of mounting it on top, I tried mounting it to the standoff. I tried mounting it at the bottom of the frame as well. The thing you need to be careful of is that the ELRS antenna does get in the way of the props because the build is quite tight. But mounting it on the top is actually the better idea. All that's left to do now is to attach the top plate and there you go. Now before you fly it, because it's something I forgot and the quad flipped out on me, what you're gonna do is come into beta flight. You're gonna go down to the configuration tab here, over to the board and sensor alignment. And then what you're gonna do is rotate the yaw by 45 degrees. The reason being is that on the original Crocs 35, the AIO was facing a slightly different direction. And so by doing this now, you should be able to go to the setup tab and have the discus follow your movements correctly. So here's my conclusion on the discus. 
I think that this frame actually solves that one problem that I had with the Crux 35 and with this edition I would say actually it's worth getting the Crux 35 as a beginner when you break the frame change it over to this you will not be disappointed it keeps all of the attributes of the Crux 35 when you're flying it it is now less likely to break when you crash it there are two things about this frame I think would make it even better the first being on the top plate there are no mounting holes for the DJI systems which means that you end up having to use that adapter you can get away with that if you're changing your Vista to a naked Vista and then using the mounting holes on the outside now the other thing that I would change on this is if you can see from the Crux 35 and this won't be the case with every single AIO uh, USB port is kind of wedged in here behind the the standoff here so in order to get to that and do any kind of configuration or tuning I have to remove the bolts from that standoff and then slide it out so you can just rotate that it's actually really quick but yeah it, it would be easier if I could just get to it very very easily other than that this is an awesome frame I've enjoyed doing this build I've enjoyed playing around with this as well and it is really small this is my three inch build so it's almost a similar size even though this is 3.5 inches this is the comparison to my grinder reno which is much much bigger than this there is this does feel like you can fling it further and i'm using bigger motors on this as well for those of you that want to see how big this is in comparison to the emacs baby hawk 03 it so as awesome as that build was this wasn't the video i was supposed to be making so i'm actually going to get back to working on the build that i was supposed to be doing and that will hopefully be the next video if everything goes right with the build and when that video is available i'm going to put it up here so that you can get to that more easily see you guys in the next one